Suppose you want to build a model to predict the price of a second-hand car. A predictive feature could be the time taken to travel a fixed distance. We could expect a negative relationship with price, and it may not be that difficult to explain. Yet, if we take the inverse, we get average speed, which is more intuitive. The point is, there are many ways to capture underlying relationships in your data. Some will be easier to explain as they align with the intuition of your audience. So we should really be doing feature engineering, not just for predictability, but also for interpretability. Hi, I'm Connor and welcome to ADO. We're going to discuss how to reformulate features with the goal of interpretability. At the same time, we're going to understand how to capture non-linear relationships using polynomial regression, discretization, and interactions. The focus will be on creating features for linear models. So we try to create features that have a linear relationship with the target variable, but you should follow a similar approach for any machine learning model. If you throw a bunch of haphazardly created features at a non-linear model, you may get high accuracy. Yet, it will be far harder to explain than if you had put thought into feature engineering along the way. To keep things practical, we'll be applying these concepts using Python. If you want any of the code we discuss, check out the article linked in the description. Before we jump into that, let's introduce the data set we'll use to explain the approach to interpretable feature engineering, the credit score dataset. It contains 84 features for 1,000 customers based on their transactions and financial position. We want to use this to estimate their credit risk, which is given by credit score. We take a higher score to indicate that a customer has a lower risk. That is, they are more likely to repay a loan. As mentioned, we'll be focusing on linear models. So a quick refresher on how to do linear regression with Python may be useful for some of you. Okay, let's jump to the notebook. We have our imports for this video. We include some standard Python packages for manipulating and visualizing data. And we'll be building linear regression using the stats model package. We load our data set. Let's take a closer look at one of these features, our debt to income. This is the ratio of a customer's total debt to annual income. We'll be exploring it using a scatter plot of the feature values versus the credit score. We see that this feature has a negative relationship with credit score. Remember, a higher score is associated with lower risk. And so a higher debt to income ratio is associated with higher risk. Thankfully, we can see the relationship is also linear. So we should be able to use it in a linear model without any additional feature engineering. To test if the linear relationship is significant, we can train a linear regression model. As features, we use both income, which is a customer's annual income, and the ratio of debt to income, which we just saw. We make sure to add a constant to the X feature matrix, so the linear model will have an intercept. We train a model using these features to predict credit score. And, and then we output a model summary. Let's focus on this part of the summary. This column gives the coefficients of the model features. They tell us that all customers will start with a base credit score of 637. This score will increase by this amount for every one unit increase in income. Similarly, the score will decrease by 9.3816 points for every one unit increase in the debt to income ratio. We saw this negative relationship in the scatter plot. Another important column is the p value of the t statistic. This gives the results of the statistical test used to ensure our coefficients are significantly different from zero. These values tell us that all the coefficients are significant. These relationships are not only significant, they make sense. We can easily relate the model coefficients to our intuition of credit risk. However, this will not necessarily be true for all significant features. Thankfully, we can often reformulate such features 
so they better match an audience's understanding of the domain or problem. Suppose that a sudden increase in expenditure on entertainment is a sign of reckless spending. One way to capture a sudden change would be to take the ratio of entertainment expenditure in the last 12 months to the last six months. With this feature, recent increases in expenditure would lead to a smaller ratio. So we can create this feature and add it to our X feature matrix. We then train a model in the exact same way as before. Looking at the summary, we can see that this feature has a significant linear relationship with the target. From a statistical point of view, this is great, but we may have trouble when it comes to interpretability. To explain the relationship, we want to say something like, if a customer has spent a large amount on entertainment in the last six months relative to the last 12, they will have a lower credit score. To get there, we have to explain how an increase in spending leads to a decrease in this feature. Then, because the feature has a positive relationship, we have a decrease in credit score. This is clumsy and likely to confuse our audience. The good news is we could adjust this feature by taking the inverse, or we could take the ratio of expenditure in the last six months to the first six months. This would give us a clearer comparison of the two periods and a better understanding of how expenditure on entertainment has changed. In fact, the R expenditure feature in the credit score dataset was created using the first approach. So let's train a model using this feature instead. Looking at the summary, we still have a significant linear relationship. Yet, notice that the sign of the coefficient has changed. It should now be clear that a relative increase in expenditure on entertainment leads to a decrease in credit score. To clarify, this is because the ratio is now expenditure in the last six months to the last 12 months. A relative increase would mean that the ratio increases. Due to the negative relationship we just saw, this would lead to a decrease in credit score. In other words, reckless spenders are more risky. Okay, so this process is subjective and you will need to make a judgment on which feature your audience will find more intuitive. The point is, the way we create features is important for interpretability and not just predictability. From the beginning, you should try to build features in an intuitive way, yet, Keep in mind that you can always reformulate features after training a model and interpretability polish, if you will. Going forward, we will look at ways of capturing nonlinear relationships with linear models. We'll keep this interpretability mindset throughout. If you're interested in this type of content, then make sure to sign up to my newsletter in the description. You'll get free access to an explainable AI course with shifting public sentiment and movements to regulate AI like the EU AI Act, factors in machine learning like interpretability, safety, fairness, and transparency will become more important in the future. The course gives you the tools to help stay ahead of this trend. Polynomial regression is when we model a target variable using the nth degree polynomial of a feature such as adding a square or cube term. Similar to what we saw in a previous video, polynomial regression allows you to reformulate a nonlinear relationship with one feature as a linear relationship between two or more features. An example comes from the R expenditure feature. This is the ratio of total expenditure in all categories in the last six months to the last 12 months. Rapid decreases in expenditure are a sign that something has gone wrong. Perhaps a customer has come into financial trouble and is being more prudent. Similarly, rapid increases are also a problem. Maybe they are looking for a loan to cover reckless spending habits. Ultimately, both large and small values for this feature are associated with high credit risk, a quadratic relationship. To capture this nonlinear relationship, we need a new feature, our expenditure square. We add this feature to our matrix along with the original linear feature and train a new model. The model summary tells us that the squared term is significant 
And the coefficient tells us the direction of the parabola. It opens downwards, which matches the relationship we described. You may also have noticed that the original feature is not significant. We'll come back to this later. Now, there's nothing special about polynomials. We can use any function, logs, exponents, or inverse. Yet adding too many of these terms will hurt interpretability. This should always be a convincing reason for including them. And in my experience, there's usually no need to go beyond a squared term. If you do find you're using complex equations to model nonlinear relationships, the next method may be a better option. Categorical features have discrete values or groups. Discretization is when we transform continuous features into categorical features. This can allow us to capture complex nonlinear relationships. We can also create groups that are highly intuitive. Take the histogram of total expenditure on gambling in the last 12 months. We can expect that the more somebody gambles, the higher their credit risk. Perhaps this feature would have a negative relationship with credit score. One problem is that this feature is highly skewed. Notice the large group of customers who don't gamble at all. Features like this can lead to violations of regression assumptions, such as skewness and heteroscedacity. Thankfully, this feature has a natural grouping of those who gamble a lot, those who gamble a little, and those who don't gamble at all. The cap gambling feature has these exact groupings, none, low, and high. Before we can use these in a regression model, we must create two dummy features using one-hot encodings. We include these one-hot encodings of the low and high groups in our model, and you can see the model summary just as before. We can see that the model coefficients align with our expectations. Both the high and low groups have negative coefficients, and the latter has a larger negative coefficient. This means that compared to the customers who don't gamble, the low group will have a lower credit score, and the high group will have an even lower credit score. So, through discretization, we have captured a nonlinear relationship in an intuitive way. Also, you can notice now that the R expenditure term has become significant in the context of these other features. Nonlinear relationships can also exist through interactions of two or more features. This is when the relationship between the target variable and the feature depends on the value of another feature. We've already seen one example of this, the ratio of debt to income. Take a look at the scatter plot of debt versus income. The points have been colored based on the customer's credit score. We can see a high debt value is only a problem if you do not have enough annual income. In other words, the effect of debt on credit score depends on the value of income. In statistics, it's common to investigate these by adding an interaction term. This is done by multiplying the two features together. We include the two original features along with this interaction term into our regression model. The effects of the individual features are known as the main effects. And the effect of the multiplicative term is known as the interaction effect. Looking at the regression summary, we can see that all the coefficients are significant. This suggests that there is a significant interaction between income and debt. Trying to explain an interaction captured in this way can be difficult. Income has a positive coefficient and debt has a negative coefficient. This makes sense. As income goes up and debt goes down, we will have a larger credit score. The positive interaction coefficient tells us that the combined effect of the two features is greater than the sum of their main effects. The higher the multiple of income and debt, the higher the credit score. Yet, there's no clear interpretation of this that will make sense from a financial point of view. The good news is there are many ways to capture interactions. We can take any function of the two features. We've already seen this with the ratio of debt to income feature. By taking the ratio instead of the multiple, we can use the predictive power of this interaction and also explain it in simple terms. If your debt is too large relative to your income, you will have a bad credit score. If you made it this far, I'm guessing you'll also enjoy this video. We compare logistic regression to a neural network 
and show that the linear model can outperform the more complex model given good feature engineering. Or check out this video, which is the one YouTube thinks you'll enjoy the most. Otherwise, remember you can get my XAI course for free with the link in the description.